I know that's one of the little bit of the controversial um, stories in the in the community in the field of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is um, it's again a medication that targets only a, a, a portion of Duchenne children, not all Duchenne patients. Only those patients that have a stop codon mutation. So this is a drug that is uh, targeted to a spe specific subgroup of children, again, between maybe 10, 15% of, uh, of patients with Duchenne. Um, and this one is actually an oral medication that is taken by mouth. And I think that in uh, actually has been approved and used now in several countries. I think that is uh, in the ballpark of maybe uh, 30 countries in the world where the drug has received approval based on the published uh, clinical trials. But unfortunately, the FDA did not grant it approval in the US yet. And I think that the devil was in the details of the interpretation of the, of the results of the clinical trials. But um, we're still waiting uh, to see how uh, that approval process might change in the future. Uh, because certainly, you know, um, the results are quite promising. Uh, there are no large trials that I know of or phase three, but basically this is a different approach. Uh, TVN102 is um, one of those approaches where actually you're trying to upregulate uh, not dystrophin, but a similar muscle protein. Um, in this uh, case, eutrophin, which can kind of replace uh, dystrophin and um, rescue the muscle membranes and the muscle fiber. So it's a completely different mechanism. Um, and, uh, you know, to uh, provide a rescue of the muscle fiber. So I think the clinical trials are in development, but they're not quite in the phase three, not quite ready for um, to be submitted for approval. So that story, uh, remains to be seen a little bit. There is some uh, consideration of utilizing CRISPR-Cas9 to uh, perform gene editing in our patients that are impacted by Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We are hopeful that with time, this may be a technique that might be applicable to this population and provide some benefit uh, in the long term with regard to muscle function and prognosis. Adebinone has uh, been evaluated as a medication that uh, may positively impact the metabolic activity within the muscles of patients impacted by Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It is uh, felt to act at the level of the mitochondria and uh, help to prevent the uh, inflammatory cascade that typically would take place in a muscle that is impacted by a dystrophinopathy. There has been uh, data provided that demonstrates that it has positively impacted some of the respiratory measures uh, evaluated in boys who have been taking adebinone and who are affected by Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So we are hopeful that over time, uh, we may see continued efficacy and potential utilization of adebinone in this patient population. For each new patient, um, the initial step is to look at the genetics and know what commercial or research um, uh, or which medication or treatment option is going to be the best for that particular patient um, and at their age and their time of um, diagnosis. Um, and uh, so the sooner that we can initiate a treatment either commercially or on a research basis to preserve the dystrophin protein, um, the, the milder the disease could potentially be. Um, and if there is a later treatment that um, is available that, actually, that maybe improves the dystrophin levels even better, um, then you know, starting with a milder disease is going to be the best place to start. So that means early treatment in order to achieve that goal.